There's a concept in plant nutrition called biochemical sequencing, and there's a very specific sequence right here that is how plants uptake and utilize nutrition. There is no other way that they that they can. It's, this is just how nature decided to make it happen. If you don't have, it's, it's a sequence too, so if you don't have something or you have a problem with something at the beginning of the sequence, the rest of the sequence is going to be messed up. So we've got to look at the sequence and obey it as we're dealing with mixing our nutrients and feeding the proper stuff. We notice that boron is the first one because boron stimulates the secretion of sugars. This is this is out of nature. Okay, this is a, the natural process, not if you're doing it in the artificial environment. Um, boron will stimulate the secretion of sugars into your medium from the roots. It feeds the microlife. The microlife converts silica that's in the soil, because silica's everywhere, into silicic acid. When silicic acid is available, now calcium uptake is optimized. Now, if you don't have silicic acid, some calcium will still get in but it's not ideal, it's not optimal levels. And I could, if we did a poll, how many have had calcium problems in your garden? Yeah, pretty much everybody. It's the most common problem that people come to the grocery store. I don't have a calamite problem. The interesting thing is it's usually not a calamite problem. It's, it's a diagnosis problem, actually. It looks like calcium deficiency, but it's more likely that you don't have silicic acid and it's causing that calcium to not be available. You're feeding it calcium already. It's in your water, it's in your soil, it's in your nutrition. But it's just not available. You optimize that silicic acid, suddenly the calcium uptake is increased. You, you get calcium to move through the plant, everything else is taken care of. Because calcium doesn't move very easily, it's immobile. So you gotta have some help for it. Everything else moves through the plant you know, in different ways, but fairly readily. So we gotta optimize that calcium uptake by getting that silicic acid. And that's what it's especially good at doing. Um, and so we have you know, a lot of examples where you have deficiencies and add silicic acid. Just keep your same nutrition, add, add facilitator, and within three days, the deficiency clears up because it gets more of that nutrition in. A couple things that are important with calcium, too, is uh, you know, you increase calcium, you increase the bricks level of your plant. That's familiar with bricks, that's a measure of quality. But also, higher bricks resist pests naturally, resist mold naturally. It also raises the pH of the internal sap of the plant, the blood of the plant. You raise the pH of the blood of the plant, how do your mildew cannot exist? Cannot over about 5.5 pH. That's not natural. I mean, it is natural, but that's nature's way of destroying the weak plants so the strong can survive. It's natural selection. Bugs don't attack healthy plants. If they did, the rainforest would be gone. Think about that. We don't fertilize. Uh, it's funny. I drive by these cornfields. Cornfield is decimated, brown. Everything's dead. Right next to it is a beautiful stand of like spruce trees or something. How is that healthy and that's not? Because we put so much shit into that soil that we killed all our microlife, this process is no longer happening, so the corn's sick. So the bad stuff happens there and right next to it is totally fine. If we get the health of the plant up, particularly that calcium, we increase all these different measurable factors to make the plant healthier. And those problems are gone. A lot of our growers don't have bugs anymore. Bugs are still there. The mold's still there, but it can't establish itself. I, I had a room uh, recently and uh, one plant dried out, got kind of sick, got stressed out, because I was an idiot. And uh, that plant, because now it was sick, it actually got attacked by mold. I had 10 plants right around it, no issues at all. Totally healthy. The mold was, I didn't even touch it, I just said, let's see what happens. Everything else through the entire cycle was totally fine because they were still healthy. And uh, so we really want to optimize this nutrition. Um, the other thing, uh, when we talk about nutrition, turn the page here to uh, nutrient antagonism. I'll talk about this a little bit more later, but. When you look at uh, the balance of nutrition too, the reason why you have a lot of these deficiencies on calcium stuff is not because, like I said, there's, you're not missing calcium, you're not missing potassium, you're feeding it. The problem is you've got a misbalance of it. And you have too much of one thing and not enough of another. And that sequence is not optimized, you start to create what's called antagonism against nutrients. And these different minerals push against each other. If you have an excess of one, it pushes another away. And so you add, and you get a deficiency. So, oh, more calcium. You add more calcium, and you know, you start to, push something way over here, we have another deficiency. And many growers spend their whole life chasing these problems back and forth through their garden. I'm wondering why am I, why am I getting better yields? Why am I having these bugs? At least a month, some people their whole life. Some people their whole life. Not after this time, it'll never happen again. So, um, so I'll talk more about nutrition antagonism in a little bit, but um, the, uh, the silicic guy is very important for getting that balanced nutrition in the plant. The other thing that silicic acid does is it uh, increases the immune response, actually stimulates the immune response of the plant, keeps it on a high alert, as if 
it kind of it affects the plant as if it's getting attacked by something. So the plant starts producing a lot of its immune system hormones and vitamins and all the different things to counteract that attack. It keeps them on high alert, so it makes it more resistant to those pests. Um, a couple synergistic microelements are very important is boron. As you see at the beginning of that sequence, we want to make sure boron is there. Boron also stimulates the production of plant fibers that combines with calcium to increase the dry weight of the plant. Very, very important. The second one is molybdenum. Um, molybdenum is very interesting. It's a microelement. It means very, very small amounts. The plant doesn't actually use it, but it's a catalyst. It actually stimulates the uptake of nitrogen from the lower leaves to the upper leaves. And this comes into the diagnostic issues again. You, you see a nitrogen deficiency in your upper leaves, for example. And your lower leaves are looking fine. They have lush green, your upper leaves are kind of that faded yellow look. What would be the natural response? Right. It's a nitrogen problem. So we go to the store, we buy a nitrogen model, whatever, and we add some more nitrogen. The problem is, it wasn't a nitrogen problem. You had plenty of N there. It's in the lower leaves. It's stored there. What you probably have is an molybdenum problem. Is that molly helps to stimulate a certain enzyme called nitrogenase that is what's responsible for bringing that nitrogen from the lower leaves to the upper leaves. Now the reverse is true. You have good healthy top leaves, but your lower leaves have an end deficiency. Now you have a good molly balance, but you need more nitrogen in the soil to bring it up to those lower leaves. Diagnostics is not as simple as looking at a leaf pattern and saying, oh, that's the problem. When, when I deal with diagnostics, I always look at mm -hmm. when people say, well, I've got a calcium problem, how do I fix it? And I ask, well, why do you have the calcium problem? That's the real issue. Let's fix that from the beginning. Let's optimize our nutrition and we won't have it anymore.